And welcome everybody to Globebusters Flat Earth Endgame. I am your host, Bob Xanadude60, and we are back with another great show for you today. Same date that it changes in different countries. Yeah, weird. Okay, I'll message you. That's probably what's going on. Yep. No, we, we pretty much have, have kept the same hours for the last four years, um, every Sunday at noon Pacific, and uh, whatever the, the time change goes with that, that's that's cool. All right, so let's introduce our very esteemed guests. Um, these two gentlemen have been on uh, Globusters one time before, and they are definitely some of my favorite content producers out there. Um, Steve and Ross have come forward with several really, really good series. Um, I, I particularly love the NASA fanboy questions that you guys do. Um, that's one of my favorite series for sure. And uh, recently you have been doing the Comets Cataclysms uh, series, which uh, just finally culminated in Part 6C, which was absolutely fabulous. I'm um, talking about, uh, you know, Earth cycles and natural disasters and reset events and stuff like that. And again, it's not done in the spirit of fear mongering. Um, this is simply taking uh, documented facts and, and historical things and kind of shining a little bit of a light on it. But uh, most recently, it's not. Uh, they're not. They're not uh, flying around with with um, planes full of, of chemicals in big vats and whatever. That's not how they do it. Um, you, oh yeah. Well yeah. Right. It's it's a part of it. It's a part of it that. We didn't really go into that in the film because, yeah, they are manipulated. I, actually, uh, Iro, you will like this because we mentioned in our, our last movie on uh, the comets part 6C that the, the comets that are the meteors or whatever that come down, they look like a sparkler when they ignite, you know, and the ionization uh, hits hits its, its release charge. And one of our subscribers came on the comment section. He said, do you know what a sparkler is made out of? It's aluminum, barium, and strontium, <laughs> which, which are in chemtrails. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. I, I, I thought, oh, my God, you know. So I'm kind of wondering, I, I, you know, chemtrail, you can talk about that for 10 hours, but I'm wondering if, they're, if the reason for all that is actually this, if it's some way to stop us seeing all these charges or to accelerate them or – um, you know, the pla because now we're seeing lightning striking from ground up, as we showed in the film, and there's weird stuff going on in, in the atmosphere, and the nitrogen is might be changing, and I, I'm not really sure. They they are definitely controlling the weather. The question is, it should, it, why? Yeah, you with, know? With, with the spraying, they're, they're, they're spraying this layer over, and, and as you've probably all noticed, that, that we've had a lot of low cloud cover recently. And that means you can't see what's going up in the sky. And if you want to go bib biblical, they, they, they say, you know, we will see signs in the sky. Mm. Yeah. They're covering all of that up, but they're also covering up the sun. Now, if the sun is uh, going into the grand solar minimum now, it's pushing out a lot of ultraviolet light. And it's a possibility that they're putting up this, this barrier up there to stop the ultraviolet light. It, that's just one. What do uh, you guys so think? What's your take on all of the, the uh, chemtrails? Can I share uh, my screen, Bob, a little bit? Oh, certainly. And uh, just for the, the, go the, ahead and do that. And honest, uh, let me give you my take on why I think they're doing that and why I think it is, is because this is just promoting their agenda with the weird weather changes, and they're trying to tie this uh, climate change into, you know, the weather changes. So they are they are manipulating the weather. They're saying again it's because of our CO2 and, and the humans that are causing this to happen. So I think that's mm -hmm. the reason why or a big part of right. it. And you are sharing and presenting here. Go for it. Okay. No, no, I, I just want to share here with the, the, the with with us, of course with the public out there also. But uh, when I prepare my my conference for Madrid, I related the man made uh, comet uh, an asteroid, quote unquote, asteroid, with the Blue Bean project, uh, because for me it's every, it's like a super giant soup, you know, or, or in terms of um, what they are doing in in uh, mm -hmm. in our real life. But also, I, I I am not forget that they have like multiple agendas. So uh, when I was looking and researching for uh, complete my conference, I came across with all these all news, and I have a ton of this. Uh, which um, there are official news that saying that you know 
from the 60s, 50s, 70s, uh, all the time NASA uh, was playing with barium vapor to glow, um, uh, to glow up in the atmosphere at uh, 100 kilometers to detect the magnetic earth field, uh, trying to make like a pattern in the sky and, and mm -hmm. see. And they, they extend all this glowing uh, until 1,000 kilometers up in the sky. And they can see they can see from Alaska to I don't know which uh, the city uh, itself that they are reporting. But you have all these uh, from the 50s, for example, with lithium, barium, and three metally aluminum, uh, creating um, what we call comets. And of course, I believe that nature has. Uh, its own method to produce this. For me, the comets uh, or, or asteroids are just uh, electrical discharge from the sky. And, you've, and in fact, it's, it's a very uh, well-known, the phenomena called globular lightings, which are spherical balls of electricity uh, that moves uh, mm -hmm. between five seconds to 30 seconds uh, in the sky, sometimes in a straight path uh, in a horizontal way, you know, left to right, for example, things like that, and make an, a big explosion with, when the um, discharge ends, uh, create a really big uh, sound in the sky, and you can still, uh, you, you can feel, smell, um, like a, a, a um, rotten X, uh, you know, so type far. of, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. And then you have this kind, for example, this is NASA creating... Uh, with lithium, uh, this kind of um, artificial, uh, um, what is called, uh, this is all with sounding rocket, of course, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, when we see this this kind of things in the sky, how how, how can you determine that mm -hmm. it's not another experiment, for example? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you, you have all these... Uh, um, and, and this is official, uh, you know, this is uh, official um, records. The, this is, for example, a geographical institute study the aurora, blah, 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 the, with rockets should design it to test the influence of... All the time, they are, at least uh, in this kind of report, they trying to um, access uh, to the electrical field of the our magnetic plane, because... You know, mm. these guys know that we live in under a toroid energetic field. So mm. they are trying to, you know, uh, see how much extends uh, the aurora borealis is kind of a natural way to see those magnetic fields, but they are playing in another part of the world and doing all these kind of experiments. I, I just want to share this with um, That's brilliant. You're, you're really good at these comments. Have you ever seen... Uh, <laughs> Have you the European Space Agency had a space freighter? They call it. You can pull it up on YouTube. Called the was it Jules Verne, the guy who wrote Sixty Leagues Under the Sea. Of course, Do you remember no, this? No, I, I, uh, pull up no, the footage I, I for the re-entry. So NASA, they or whatever, well, whoever was filming it, they they claim they filmed the footage of the uh, the space freighter Jules Verne coming back into the atmosphere and burning up. Watch this and tell me this is not a comet breaking up. If you can pull it up on YouTube, right? I go. I, let, let me just one second. For example, oh, this yeah. is a, a really good example because this is a typical comet that we see entering our atmosphere, but this comet start turning. You know, start turning to the left. It like like it's following some kind of uh, electrical, uh, you know, path or something like that. So uh, these kind of things, there are. The, no, 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 no. So much uh, news are reporting this. This, this is just a homemade videos. Uh, it, this is this particular case is in Venezuela, and this is the um, this is our globular lightings. Mm -hmm. There are electrical lighting, for example, that goes up. If you see in the movie, is related to the family of the sprites, but all mm -hmm. these are just electrical discharge of the of uh, in, in the sky. You know, I mean, uh, it has. Of course, the same behavior because it produces uh, sound, a really, really heavy sound, really big sound, and also uh, have this smell. And of course, because produce sound, the um, the wave uh, can break glass or or things like mm -hmm. that. Because uh, of course, 
it's a sound uh, when when you you know uh, with sound you can break things uh, too. So if the explosion is very big, uh, it's going to travel along the air and could uh, break things. And then the news reporter is going to come with the typical uh, story behind that the meteor impact, but nobody see those impact on the ground. Nobody found those rocks, and you know. Uh, for me, it's every, everything is electrical without any doubt. Yep, but there's one hell of a sonic boom behind it, though. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Well, we were, if you can find it on YouTube, look at the re-entry for the European Space Agency. Uh, Jules Verne, isn't that his name? Uh, Voyage of the Earth and Journey. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. So okay, I'm stop what, we, what we think NASA okay. is doing, just to get a little off subject, but you remember when, uh, what was it, a Skylab, was that what it was called? Yeah, Skylab. Yeah, remember right. when Skylab crashed and then this thing coming in? <laughs> I think they're slowing down footage of comets and then claiming these are the space shuttle. What was the one? That, the yeah, space yeah, the Columbia. 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 Is that the one they said uh, burned up on re-entry? Yeah. Yes, Columbia. Yeah. because yeah. it's the same type of, uh, of light of color, of behavior, is the same thing. It's not different enough. It's, it's the same thing. So when you know, you guys know the hoax they're running, so you've got this fake space shuttle up there and you need to explain it away and then you get footage of one of these comets or meteors coming down. You just say, that's them coming in and they burn up. But the same thing happens as what you're talking about here. It, it ends in a big flash and a little, uh, a little, you know, I think they're just slowing down footage of these and claiming that's their stuff coming back in. They could also be shooting down just just weapons that do that uh, missile yeah. or whatever. Yep. Well, it's interesting. Sorry, Bob. Uh, go, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, okay, I was just going to say, it's interesting you mentioned, you know, the, the electricity and the moon, because um, I had this article pulled up. The moon is electric, especially when it's full. And it goes into this uh, this electric shell that's around the moon. And, of course, most people, unless they've been following the electric universe or if they've been following the electric universe or Thunderbolts project, um, NASA has always disavowed that there's any, uh, you know, major electrical influence, you know, that's taking that that's controlling anything out in the cosmos. They say it's all gravitational. And, you know, it, it's clearly electrical. And now they're starting to leak this stuff into, you know, the, the narrative. You know, talking about electric shell. Yeah, electric shell of the moon. So, uh, Steve, what what was the name of the video you wanted me to look up on YouTube? Whoops, Steve, you there? Uh -oh. It was something about uh, Isa, uh, Jules Verne. Uh, Jules Verne um, freighter coming back or re-entry Jules Verne's uh, Isa. Re yeah, put re-entry Isa. Re yeah, what happened and to Stephen Ross? The, the predicted program of Google, of YouTube uh, do the rest. There you uh, have it. Okay, dramatic uh, Jules Verne re-entry video. Okay, well, let's... Mm -hmm. uh, dramatic, yeah. I guess, yeah. I guess yeah. this is it. So let's see what that's about. And uh, Stephen Ross, I don't know what happened. We lost you guys. Where are you? They're muted, it seems like it. Are, are they muted? Yeah, sorry, we're muted, yeah. We're muted, oh, yeah. okay. Boy, we're getting worried about you there. We thought they came and got you. <laughs> <laughs> So imagine you slow down, uh, like, you know, comet footage or meteor footage, so-called. To me, this looks just like it. Yeah, you, you, but, uh, but it's official, uh, the reports in military industry that they produce these big metal balls and they um, drop in the sky and make experiments. Then you have the artificial meteoroid that uh, you have the company called... Um, uh, Stellar. Uh, um, there is a Japanese company that produced these kind of things too in in an uh, artificial way. So could be uh, like you said, could be. A are you talking, sorry, are, are you talking about these these big balls that people keep finding in fields uh, and stuff? Yes, these metal there balls. is. Yeah, yeah the, like big, big fireworks, basically. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the the Russians, the United States are using that in military training. Then you have the company called Star Ale, which is a Japanese company that produces meteor shower, uh, meteor, um, uh, you know, fireworks and things like that in the sky. And that is official. You can enter into the web page. It's about $10,000 uh, and up 
for this event and they sell this kind of event to a really huge uh, and big um, um, uh, shows, you know, like super mm -hmm. recitals and uh, tours right, right. of music, things like that. But if that was the case in terms of the Skylab or, or some kind of re-entry machine, we have been seeing a lot of this. And, you know, there are only see from particular moment and event that they produce to brainwash people. Uh, that's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And as yeah. Jaron said in his speech, you know, what, what was it, 400 billion a year industry, was it? Yeah, base industry, 400 billion. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So it's 50 million a day for cartoons. Yeah, well, yeah. But, uh, yeah exactly. how much, how much, 60 million how much now. Bigger, <laughs> how much bigger is it, Jaron, than the other industries combined, all the other entertainment industries? It's just bigger, but it's pretty close. I mean, if you take all the industries, talking about music, talking about Hollywood, talking about uh, video game industry, I think all that combines around 350. So still, space industry is more than all of them combined, which is insane to think about. Even if you think about the music industry and everything, and that's all of online purchasing, that's all of iTunes, that's every album released. And if you look at all movies, that's just that's Hollywood, that's box office, that's home entertainment, that's and that's all across... Uh, the earth you know so that's crazy to even think that the space yeah. industry is worth so much more but the, the nice thing is that for our safety none uh, you cannot uh worry you that you don't must be worried because all the pieces always disintegrate in the atmosphere never mm -hmm. fall to the ground you know <laughs> so, so lucky well, yeah, yeah they, they drop yeah. those those balloons that fall sometimes and it wasn't in argentina that they dropped some stuff like engines and because sometimes um, they, they pop yeah. in the news that something fell off the sky and it's a... Storm. Yeah, but there are that, those giant balls. Uh, they uh -huh. are not like... Uh, uh, sometimes you can find uh, like the fuel tank, uh, but that is from the rocket. Uh, that that doesn't uh -huh. come from outside and enter in our atmosphere. And in fact, this kind of uh, shows or this kind of light... You cannot determine uh, you cannot determine the the size or, or the uh, distance well, because is, you right? have the black background of the sky and you don't have any kind of reference to compare how big is this uh, what it is exactly yeah, what, is, what is this thing but, that why is going to have but the, the thing is if you go to the website uh, Star Ale Company. Uh, they use this uh, fluoroluminescence uh, technology to produce all these colors. You, you can use barium, lithium, and all kind of, uh, there are like seven colors in the sky that produce this blue, green, red, yellow, uh, violet color. So why the, 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 the Skylab, when it's entering our atmosphere, is produced that green color exactly as the, 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 the entertainment of comets uh, do? You know, I mean, yeah, so they can just use the, the gas that they want to produce the effect that they want in the time they want. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there was a report of uh, a, a big blue one over Phoenix, I think, a, a few days ago. And it was bright blue. <laughs> it's all kinds of stuff, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, salad. Well, one thing I was going to mention to you guys uh, is that uh, Jules Verne. Ale, Bob, if you want to. Star Ale. Um, uh, I, 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 on YouTube? No, no, just in Google uh, because Star. Star. A L E. Star Ale. Star Ale. Yeah. Star -L -E. Yeah. And put comet or, or that one, the first one. Shooting start on demand. <laughs> it's like Netflix. <laughs> <or TV. laughs> don't play the video. Don't play the video if you if you have someone there. But if you start scrolling down, they are you know that's the color that we see in the sky, mm -hmm. and um, they they show you all the technique behind to produce this kind of um, artificial going down a little more. And you're gonna see uh, the, 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 the watch uh, the, the video. There you have all the things behind this. Uh, but if you go uh, ground observation, and you know, I, I mean, they produce these things, you know, on demand for public, for public wow. entertainment. So wow. if you are a military uh, <laughs> industry or you are a government and you don't think that they are really have this in big scale uh, for his own entertainment. Oh, yeah. 
Wow. Absolutely. Of course. So so unbelievable. Being, of course. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. And in the video, it's uh, all the the um, the showroom that how they produce. Uh, and you know, the, if you play it, you cannot use the sound. That's the only uh, restriction. Can't use. It's the amazing sound. how all this stuff is just out in the open, like with the Argos as well, right? You know, it's right in your face. It's right in your face, yes. And they say, they say this, the, the funny thing is that if you go in uh, a little more, that one, for example, they, they say that they put like this tiny cube satellite shooting the, the, the spheres yeah. in, the, in the sky. They always need, you know, put in your head that they are using satellite and, and things like that. That's the funny part. I mean, they put this satellite <laughs> shooting meteor in the sky. What the... <laughs> it's one of the cube That's ones. Bad. Wow! Oh my goodness! Unbelievable! And, but but again, this is just a, a, a regular company. I mean, you can imagine what they have behind the doors, yeah. right? Wow! Yeah, I, I was gonna I was gonna mention as well. Like since you guys mentioned Jules Verne, and and the name came up, of course, in 1969, there's a film with Werner von Braun. Talking about going to the moon, right in '69, something produced like a, you know, it's like one hour and a half. And it, the first quotes and all the quotes in that film are come from Jules Verne, and, and he talks about how the the actual capsule was modeled after Jules Verne's capsule, and he compares the moon capsule to the to Jules Verne's capsule. And and, and one thing that's odd as well is that in the Back to the Future, you have Doc Brown. And he explains that he changed the name, the family changed the name for Vron, from Von Brown, right? To become, so he becomes Doc Brown. So it, it's, it, you know, they run a mesh that runs through fiction and their kind of docu-fiction thing that people believe is real and tie them up from all sides into the Are narrative. You, wait, you're saying in Back to the Future, they actually said that his name was Von Brown? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's Back to the Future 2. Um, one of you. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, they, yeah. He explains. They, he explains. Oh, my name, my our name, our family name used to be Von Brown, and it, we changed to Brown <laughs> when we moved from Germany. I think he says. Oh God! Well, Isn't that exactly the same as the the, the British royal family? Yeah, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're German too. Yeah, they keep I'm, changing their name. Well, here's an interesting thing too. I don't want to get too off topic, but it, it is th these controllers. You know, what happened in the in the states is they used to have they the Rockefeller Foundation. They make these foundations which still run our world today. You're, the governments are run by these think tanks and corporations and NGOs, but they they took over the literary societies, right? So all H.G. Wells and all these science fiction writers, they were in with this crowd. So the stuff they were writing about, people say, oh, they write science fiction and then inventors get the idea from Star Trek and then now we have a flip phone. That's not how it worked. They actually controlled the literary society so they could control what books were coming out. And just like with, as we talked about earlier, with Dean Koontz and this Wuhan 400, they tell these authors, they say, they don't tell them what to write the book about, but they say, put this in there, put that. We need this idea. This is all part of the programming. It's predictive programming. We yeah. are totally controlled and micromanaged and have been since e easily the 18, late 1800s, early 1900s. So this is how they work through literary societies. And if you aren't in their crowd, your book doesn't come out. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? So Jules Verne, he probably definitely was in that clique and, and made to, to, you know, to, to say all this stuff. And it's That's a weird, true. why would you name a spaceship after journey to the center of the earth and <laughs> yeah. 20,000 leagues under the it's sea? It's the same, um, <laughs> what, what was the guy that invented sh satellites? Uh, Arthur C. Clarke. Yeah. 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 The same, same, same thing. Same stuff. Well, they, they, the click too. They, they, they know about this. They've known about this. And they also know exactly how this world works. This yeah. is what we're all trying to find out now. Uh, we're, we're talking about the electromagnetism and, and everything. What you've got to remember is these guys, they know how it works. They know exactly how it works. And they've been utilizing it for years. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. 
decades they've what? been u- Did, utilizing it. Didn't they use Space Force? Didn't they use the Star Trek logo for Trump's Space Force? <laughs> yes. <right>? yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, good God, man. Come on. <laughs> just just um, as an uh, um, example of how uh, they, they know what's going to happen and they know about this technology is uh, the – the electricity pylons all over the world, you know, these, they, they stretch for miles. There's thousands of miles of them. The high yeah? power tension lines, the metal structures they're sitting on. Yeah. We've always been taught that that is getting electricity from one place to another, a, a town or a village and whatever. It's not. It's harvesting the energy from the air. And hey, you know, then- I've heard that. I've heard that theory before, and it's an interesting one, and it doesn't wouldn't surprise me. And it's harvesting it via induction. Into those into exactly. those wires, exactly. And this is what I mean. When I was a kid, we used to call it the national grid. That is exactly what it is. It's a grid network of these pylons all over uh, the country that are harvesting the power, and that's what they're using. When the population got bigger and we needed more power, that's when we had to start nuclear and coal powered and and water hydro powered. Years ago, the national grid was all we needed. Yeah, when, right, when, it would be underground. Yeah, you wouldn't because, lay you know, cables. Of why, why would you even do that? Exactly. If you look at these things, the way they're built, they are massive. The, it's so much easier to put a cable under the ground these days. Yeah. And they dead end in some power station in the middle of nowhere. And do exactly. A some of these things, if you, if you go on Google truck, Earth, yeah. right, and, and, and find a power line, and then you follow it. Some of these power lines, they, they go out into the countryside for miles, and then they come back right to the place yeah. they started, yeah. uh, in, into a, a ground unit. Yeah. A grounded wire. Yeah. It, 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 this is what's happening. So these guys know how this world works. They've been using this free energy for years, for decades. Another interesting thing, if you were to pull up the plans of the uh, – Twin Towers, the uh, the World Trade Center, yeah? Mm-hmm. And there was all this talk about the um, uh, insulation. What, what, what was it? Uh, asbestos. The asbestos, yeah? Right. You pull up the plans uh, and you see the cutaway section of these two buildings. It looks just like a capacitor. <laughs> Those That, that uh, insulation only goes up to the 35th floor on one of the buildings. The other one is the one with the big aerial on the top. They they've been harvesting this energy for years and years and years. Yeah, and that and I have no gets, doubt. Well, it gets interesting because you know it, it seems like in these grand solar minimums, it, it ramps up. We we get more electrically charged, obviously, which is why we start seeing, you know, in, in part two of our first film. They were seeing Aurora Borealis down uh, down in Connecticut in England. And, you know, you, there's no reason to see that. We are told the Borealis is there because of the magnetic pole in the North Pole. But <laughs> then what the hell would it be doing down in England? Do you know what I mean? So, and yeah. people were wearing those lightning chains and going out to the park with lightning, uh, which we put in the film. You know, like, you don't go to the park on a sunny day and then have a lightning rod. You don't get struck by lightning on a sunny day. So I think the the charges start changing, maybe because the the sunspots are gone. I don't know, but it seems to me during these periods, the reason everything kicks off is yeah, we live in an electric closed circuit with pressure, and the atmosphere changes, and now lightning striking down up. We were just talking mm-hmm. about the rapture today, actually, because we saw what was the video we saw where that the guy of times for all um, is he put out a little video. Uh, with a Van de Graaff generator. Have you seen that one? Yeah, it was made in my kitchen. Oh, good times for all is actually. Yeah, he's uh, staying I here with us. It was. <laughs> uh, Level Earth true. Observer yeah. put it out uh, this morning. That's it. Yeah. Um, now you you look at that video there, and immediately we both looked at it and we thought rapture. Yeah, yeah. because <laughs> if, if like Brian Austin Lambert's right, and the charge reverses. Yeah, and then you get sucked up. up if the negative goes up. I don't think everything, but if it was stronger than the ground charge, yeah, some it changes that bias. It would change the bias. Yeah. And that's something I've been saying for a long time. It's yeah. like, look, if we are truly living in, in the, the flat earth model where we have a firmament 
or you know something above us that carries a charged potential, which I think there is a huge amount of evidence for that, um, you know, in a myriad of ways. Then what would happen if we change the charge potential of that? Well, you could have something like the, uh, you know, what you were just talking about there, the rapture, things floating up, um, or you know, dramatic, dramatic plasma uh, excitations and all kinds of things like that. So. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind. But yeah, if if you if we are living in uh, a construct where the Earth ground is one side of a capacitor and the firmament is the other side, then of course it makes sense. Then then we would have this field, the static charge field, um, 100 volts per meter going all the way up as far as we can measure. That's exactly what would be happening inside of a capacitor. Yeah, my problem with the rapture thing on that model is there are still billions. Don't tell me the elephants and rhinos and all that shit grabbed onto a tree and held tight. Well, there's there is too that. many species around. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? I do. Don't tell me there's too many species around that, that everything got sucked up in the sky. And no way. Mm -hmm. But there yeah. could be some some things do like smaller things or 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 something else like that. But then also you have vertical winds. If you have you know, if your hurricane turns into an ionic plasma super tornado, well, that'll suck your ass up in the sky, too, as well. Mm -hmm. One thing I can say, if you're a Christian and you're looking forward to the rapture, <laughs> you, you might <laughs> want to think again. You do not want to get up there because yeah, well, you, it's, it's true. It's long way down. You will definitely be with Jesus sooner than later, <laughs> probably when you fall back down. So, yeah. you know. Well, one thing I was going to mention is that there the have been reports in, in, from antiquity I read in, in my channel from a book from 2,000 years ago uh, that covered many extreme odd events and it included lightning, lightning happening out of nowhere, no clouds, uh, many reports. So that's from ancient Rome. Uh, that's one thing. Another, another thing I know from Aboriginal stories in South America, uh, there's an indigenous group. I think the, the book is called Women, Women in the Forest. They talk about an inversion where things go upside down. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, things get completely turned around from time to time. So that, that story is out there. Um, and, that, and then we know, I, I guess, not sure you guys know of the channel Stellium 7. Oh, yeah, definitely. No. That's, that's Mike. I don't. Stadium Seven, Stellium, S T E L L I U M. Uh, his name is Mike. Okay. He's uh, he's flat Earth man's best friend, and uh, he lives over there uh, mm -hmm. in Spain. Spain, yeah, Spain. Yeah, he, cool. Yeah, yeah, and he, What's, but he found, uh, yeah, what he found is that there's a mountain near where he lives. It looks like a mountain, but the the he has dozens of coincidences relationships between that mountain being a being uh that had just yeah. has been petrified uh and uh there's a lot of evidence supporting this kind of thing there's many sides mm -hmm. to it so it's just is it is odd and that that would be a gigantic being this thing with one kilometer high oh a titan five, yeah well if five. you guys check out roger at mud fossil university yep. have you ever seen this yep he's he another one. dna testing done on these rocks and there's dna and these human rocks. dna <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah unbelievable and he shows you that, that these are <laughs> tissues with blood and it, it is unbelievable it is is it does appear that and you can see a lot of these rock structures it's an elephant it's a you can see that what it is Mm -hmm. that, God, imagine, like, God, if Is everything it, was that big. Yeah, I, I, that's how it ties into the, the, the grand solar minimums. When we when we go through these, it, it pretty much wipes everything out. Um, and we have to start again. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, That brings in now creation, now, electro, exactly. the chicken or the egg. You're like, where yeah. do, these, do we all just manifest out of you know, the chicken or the egg, you can't have a kid without a fetus, but you can't. So where yeah. does all this life pop back well, up again? Well, what I was saying with the buildings that we're looking, if you're looking at the mud flood and, and all these, the buildings back then, they all had bigger doors, bigger windows, bigger yeah. everything. And and it all points towards that before the last reset, we were bigger. Yeah. And, yes. and the reset for that, we were bigger again. And then you go back to the giants and to the titans and Everything got bigger, and it, it, it's as if every time we have a reset, that we lose a bit of pressure in this uh, construct that we and live in. And oxygen content and goes down as well. The oxygen, exactly, yeah. uh, and, and everything gets smaller. Yep. Yeah. 
Well, exactly. Yeah. So it, that, I mean, it does. It, it's bizarre as it sounds when you really look into this subject. It does look like everybody was huge back then. And <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you guys get into the dinosaur. You know, Eric Dubay had his dinosaurs aren't real and all that. But what I think is that some, di- you know, T-Rex and Brontosaurus, that's probably bogus. But really, if you can have a woolly mammoth, why couldn't Triceratops just be a big ancient rhino? Do you see Very what I possible. mean? Yeah. Maybe there's, some there's... of the dinosaurs are there, and then because they had to sensationalize it, they go, well, now we need T-Rex. You know, so they yeah, make actually, up a bunch yeah. of the crap, yeah. but maybe there were giant armadillos and rhinos. and Maybe there was, yeah. Whatever. But the thing know. is, yeah. the only bones that they ha- actually have found is is like mammoth and triceratops, which is a big rhino, yeah. as you said. All of these other ones, these with, with feathers and, and yeah. fins and yeah, all this <laughs> That's that's rubbish. That's well, rubbish. I mean, look at the whales. They're huge. Like a blue whale is yeah. giant. It's still yeah. here. And, oh, yeah. you know, if you do find these bones, they're in the Smithsonian. You'll never see it. Yeah. yeah I mean, even, even the guys yeah. looking, uh, the, the um, what, what do you call them? The, uh, Archaeologists. Archaeologists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, we know, they, we know, we know of, so. of a number of, of these animals, so very massive bears, bigger bears and bigger kangaroos. They started disappearing when humans supposedly move in the mainstream narrative to Australia. So that's around 40,000 years ago in their, in their narrative after, I think that's even before the end of the ice age, of course, before the end of the ice age. So supposedly when humans got there, they were, they were all much more fauna in Australia. Uh, that I mean, that's one of the stories they tell. But uh, supposedly that's all coming from a fossil record, uh, and but you know that's the kind of stuff that you have to dig to to compare. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, this so, uh, is this is your field actually. I wanted to ask you this actually. Uh, they say that it started out with prokaryotes and mycaryotes, right? And then somehow they morphed into larger things and turned into fish and then crawled on the land. You know, like, that, that's the mainstream narrative. But there are still prokaryotes and mycaryotes today that are exactly the same as they claim were 2 billion right. years ago. Why yeah, have yeah. they not evolved? Right? Exactly. Right. How could they still be here if we all came from there? It's exactly right. yeah. the same as the missing link. Yeah, yeah. You Big will problem. never find the missing link. You'll never find a fish with, with small legs on it. You yeah, it's frauds, like if we if we evolved from if monkeys, then why are there still monkeys, right? It's the same kind of question. Exactly. Yeah. You say it's a common ancestor and so on, but what you do find for sure is a history of many frauds for the uh, trying to find a missing link. For sure. Yep. Well, so, it's also uh, in their timeline, they, these species just pop up. There's like billions of years of no evolution, and then there's dinosaurs. And you're like, what? They're, they're, you know, <laughs> their whole chart does like that. Then where are the Miocene apes? They said, oh, there were 12 species of Miocene apes. Where are they? They're, if we came from them, wouldn't they?